and thus I hold someday to aid of can such hope be vain when my dear country will be made a nation once again a nation once again a nation once again and I let my father speak a nation once again one more time guys again a nation once again a nation once again and I let my father speak a nation once again Derek Warfield and uh, I was born in uh, Dublin uh, back in 1943 on the 15th of September and uh, I've uh, for most of my life I've spent uh, singing the songs of Ireland uh, and performing them to audiences all over the world uh, so um, I'm delighted to talk to you Marcus about my life of music for 55 years Commemorations in uh, Irish uh, society is a very new thing mm. to Irish people. Uh, you have to remember that uh, under English rule it was impossible for Irish people to remember their patriotic figures or even to remember their, uh, their past. Mm. Uh, you know, I think people in Ireland do not realise that um, the destruction of heritage uh, by successive British governments led to a poor value on anything that was Irish. Uh, failures of the rebellions of uh, uh, 1798, 1803, the failure of Daniel O'Connell to restore the parliament, the failure of Parnell, uh, democratic par uh, politics uh, failed with them. Um, to convince England that uh, this country needed um, people that paid attention and wanted to act in the interests of the people of Ireland. Okay. So the answer is that when we commemorate when we commemorate our heroes and our patriots and those in society that we want to um, pay tribute to, it was done in poem, in song. Mm -hmm and it was done in uh, literature, largely the literature that was written from the uh, 15th to the uh, uh, 19th century, 20th century, was written outside of Ireland that had any credible value. Uh, most of the literature that was written in, in, in Ireland would be always under the uh, censorship eye of London. Mm. So we're only coming to terms in this generation, in my generation, I've been able to assert our remembrance, as other countries have done of, down through the generations. If you go across Europe, you'll find monuments and cenotaphs and uh, statues to men, women, patriots, military leaders and churches and squares. Mm. You know, we hadn't that luxury in Ireland. So our monuments are in our music, in our songs, in our ballads. And that's what I've been doing for 55 years, telling the people of the world of those monuments and I'm very proud to have done that. Music was very important in keeping the 1798 rebellion <coughs> going. Does the history live on through music or how do you think the history lives on through music? Oh, yeah. without a doubt, I mean, since the earliest texts of Irish history, the very ancient books of Ireland all mention music. Yeah. Mm. Music uh, was a, a very essential part of Irish society. Mm -hmm. um, it um, not only told the story of our people, but it also educated Mm. And it also indeed carried uh, information from uh, one part of the country to another. And uh, in many ways, there's a lot in there when it comes to our music. Under the Brehan laws and uh, the ancient laws of Ireland, it was very important for the Shanachies and the Philly uh, to tell the story and to herald the important aspects of community and to pay tribute to those 
who indeed recognise uh, the good and great things that were part of uh, the society. 1798 would have been the first event of uh, and the first um, rebellion that had had been uh, uh, songs had been written in the English language. Mm. Uh, you have to remember that, like during the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries, um, by and large, for the first 300 years that English or normal people came to Ireland, uh, they uh, largely adapted the manners and customs of the Irish people. Mm. Uh, so it was only in the uh, late 16th century that the uh, il people in London decided uh, to destroy the Gaelic order because it was a threat. And they just didn't want the submission of the Irish people. They wanted to destroy and uh, uh, completely uh, the heritage, traditions and culture and to say it never existed. So it was a, 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 in a certain campaign that went on for over 200 years to achieve that. Mm. And uh, any manuscript that was in the hands, indeed, of Irish people, your, your family was under threat. So we, we live today, and uh, scholars have lived for the half, last 250 years since um, uh, the early part of the 19th century, um, looking over the remnants of what was left. And uh, thank God we have uh, libraries in across Europe that did take the literature and harbour it in uh, in uh, institutions across Europe because it's there that some of our earliest texts of history are to be found today. So I want to just remind people that um, like 1798 would have been the first event and uh, first rebellion in the English language. Up to that point, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Gaelic language would have been the means to which uh, the bards would uh, have sung yeah. their songs of protest uh, and resistance uh, to the um, to the heritage destruction of the British government. And um, so, the 1798, the bards and the the balladeers, if you like, that wrote the street ballads of Ireland, would have been um, uh, the descendants and the. Uh, in, in the direct line of the, the bardic tradition that uh, resisted um, uh, the attempted uh, 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 conquering of Ireland and uh, the, particularly the cultural destruction. I always place that as of prime importance uh, because um, it wasn't just that the uh, English authority wanted to conquer this country but they also wanted to destroy forever that any civilization ever existed. Mm. So that's that's a very important thing for people to remember. So <clears throat> when we commemorate today, Irish people are not assertive in, in terms of what other countries have done across the world in remembering the dead because they were told up through my father's generation that they couldn't remember. Uh, the one thing that I've always uh, felt uh, was um, very important to Irish uh, people and Irish nationality and identity is that we did have immigrant communities in Europe, mm. across in Germany, and uh, in Spain, in France, and in America, that did uh, harbour the literature and uh, uh, give it um, the sunshine that it deserved. Um, that's been very important indeed to the, the strength of our culture and tradition. That's interesting because you mentioned about uh, if you'd have been on tour around America, like how would like a country like America compare celebrating maybe its, its war of independence compared to the Irish war of independence? Is there much of a difference? Or um, well, look, there's a huge difference because um, the first difference is uh, like there's been closure mm. with uh, the uh, the fight between the United States and England. Mm. It was a very bitter and long fight. Yeah. It went on not just for the seven years of the Revolutionary War, but it went on in the Second War when the British tried to retake the colonies. Mm. And it also went down through the 19th century in an economic sense, where um, the British um, uh, fanatic imperialists tried to take the country over economically. The American, uh, being the American way of uh, commemorating their, their past is um, it's something that we could uh, emulate and copy because uh, they do pay tribute to the um, 
the men and women that are responsible for the um, freedom of the country in, in a very, very powerful way. And um, as most countries should do, because um, they create a value on uh, the heritage that they created, um, the, the opportunities that were given to society there. Mm. And, you know, the Declaration of Independence is very close to Robert Emmett's um, declaration that he produced back in 1803. And of course, the Emmets had a huge influence in America, being his brother, Thomas Addis Emmett, um, mm. had a year of uh, all the presidents in, in the United States. And I think people in Ireland probably don't realize that um, like in the 19th century, uh, the evil empire of the world uh, would have been England in yeah. terms of uh, American poli politics. Uh, so uh, America really has um, uh, commemorated their, 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 their patriots and uh, their wars in a way that should be done, but so have many other countries. The French do the same. Mm. Uh, they, they, they realize the sacrifice that some people made to give the liberties uh, uh, and freedoms to uh, uh, people, and they're of great value. Um, if you look back through history, you'll see that m many people lived under the threat of, um, for any expression of uh, their their feelings or uh, their thoughts. So. Any country that offers um, freedom of speech is, um, and freedom to express yourself, you know, th that should be remembered, the people that created that society. Um, you've performed, um, or you've been involved a lot with Tipperary history, and you've performed in uh, Muir Street, and you've given speeches in Solohead Beg. Um, what's the motivation? Well, I, I think that um, I, I've always felt uh, that you know, we should do more to honour the uh, people that were responsible for giving us um, the opportunity to, to, uh, to appreciate uh, the wonderful heritage that this country has. Okay. And we are the oldest defiant nation in Europe. We have one of the most beautiful languages of Europe, one of the oldest indeed uh, in the world. Um, it has uh, the song and tr musical tradition has carried the hopes, the dreams and the aspirations of Irish people for mm. generations. So I, I feel that, um, that like, co uh, commemorating and expressing this as I've done over my lifetime uh, is a very, very positive thing. How would Ireland help connect with the younger generation after the 100th anniversary of the, you know, the revolutionary period? You learn from the past, yeah. hopefully. Uh, people like myself that have I've read through history all my life, um, you do see uh, errors and mistakes that were made in people that were considered uh, leadership uh, mm. uh, quality. So it's it's not just um, it's not just an easy thing to pass on uh, history. But I think to start. You have to teach it in schools. Mm. Um, you have to teach uh, people, uh, young people, uh, why they're in the position they're in now today, mm. and uh, the uh, the events and issues that created the problems that we have, and then try and make the society and the next generation that comes after um, in a better, leave it in a better state. We always hope to do that, and I think um, uh, any. Uh, uh, any patriotic men or politicians would like to think that they can create a society that offers a little more uh, in the way of freedom and in the way of expression than the one that's gone be past and, and gives more appreciation to the, um, the traditions and culture that we share. It, it's something that kind of interests me because when you look at like maybe the national broadcast or RTE they don't seem to be putting forward, I suppose, songs from that period. Would you have an opinion on that? No, well, you know, uh, I, since its foundation, um, RT have never been in, uh, represented the uh, cultural, uh, uh, the cultural taste of the Irish people. Mm. Uh, they've never represented uh, in any way. Um, and I always uh, I thought that back in the 60s, uh, 
because I, I knew some wonderful um, uh, stage and uh, performers who died and wonderful people that without any recognition indeed from a national broadcaster of their ability to entertain mm. and I'm speaking about like the, the in when I grew up in Dublin in the 50s there was a, a, a massive uh, 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 audience for for live shows mm. and for pantomimes and for plays and uh, almost all of those um, actors and uh, performers went to their grave with any realistic um, uh, a part in television. Mm. Now I realize also that television was in its infancy mm. back in the 60s and 70s but I do think that it, it took a long time and it's taken a long time for people to appreciate that the native um, and Irish uh, and musical tradition and uh, comic tradition, every part aspect indeed of, of, of performance and traditions and culture um, has a value that is equal if not superior to much of the um, the entertainment that's, that's, that's offered from, from other uh, um, sources. Okay, now I believe there's something else just we wanted to mention about RTE. Or yeah, just uh, I, I, I've often thought like um, because I've uh, travelled and performed in so many countries you know where the Irish people have settled, mm. I've often thought that the, like, one of the reasons that I mentioned it earlier in my interview uh, that the RTE have never reflected the musical taste of the Irish people. Mm. Really, have never reflected the cultural taste of the Irish people. Yeah. Um, because, but they're addressing it in a very, very um, narrow way. Uh, the Irish race is not confined to Ireland. Mm. And, you know, I often feel to make a, 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 an organiz a national organization like RTE representative of the Irish people, that uh, if they if they considered the wider or, or, or Irish family that's spread around the world, mm. they would be indeed a wealthy uh, institution, not looking for money. <laughs> They'd be very, very because um, they, they are there is a great hunger among people uh, of Irish spirit and extraction and uh, Irish descent uh, across the world that want to know about the heritage and traditions of Ireland mm. but and um, I think that because of the narrowness of the way uh, that people think in uh, in uh, in RTE they have never addressed that uh, um, audience mm -hmm. and uh, I think they should look at that um, and uh, to maybe commercialize it and to enterprise and mm. and, uh, and and bring it you know in fairness to uh, Tina G mm. they have tried to do that in, in a very very minor way uh, but not getting uh, a, a wider audience and it is a great opportunity now through the way um, information is spread around the world now mm. you know to to address the, those people okay. um, and I, I I've said that back in the 80s, yeah. 90s, but nobody's listened to me, but um, maybe somebody might listen to me now because with the need for money, they, they might say, yes, we'll have a go at that. <laughs> so, What's your favorite Irish song? I know it might change from time to time, and why? Sorry to put you on the spot. Or you can <laughs> duck it if you want. <laughs> I, I'm afraid I'll have to duck that one, eh? because, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I have... Um, I have favorites for every aspect of Irish yeah. music, yeah. and I have, you know, when people speak about our musical tradition, I say always that it's as uh, varied yeah. as our accents. Yeah. And you have a beautiful loud accent, yeah. and uh, I have a Dublin accent. I hope. Uh, yeah. um, and if I speak to a Kerry man, he has a beautiful accent. Well, the music is the same. Exactly, right, to yeah. me, it, it's the music of Ireland it has its um, its own. Uh, uh, if you like local quality, yeah. but it's national yeah. in its expression. Yeah. I mean, you have to remember that it's a, it's um, it, it's a very powerful medium, and uh, and so I have my favourite songs from Kerry. I love the Valley of Knockanore. I like uh, the Boys of Born Australia. The uh, I like the Lonely Man of Strand. I like all of the Kerry songs. I like all of the chorus songs. The Boys with the Michael uh, and. <coughs> I I love the the Dublin songs as yeah. well, and but they, the 
they all have a very different character. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, so. To single out one particular song uh, be very hard for me to do, uh, but I do recognise one thing, and that uh, there's a tremendous talent mm. in the Irish uh, people uh, to give expression to their feelings uh, through song and poetry and verse. Yeah. And this is being persistent, consistent, right down through the centuries. It has never died, mm. uh, even during the worst periods of oppression uh, and the worst periods of social and uh, indeed deprivation during the hunger and the starvation of our people. Um, there was always somebody to give us uh, uh, words and enlighten us to how they felt about the uh, the situation and issues that affected the country so um, even in the darkest days of the 17th century we always had uh, the uh, the writers and scribes like that preserved and uh, the history the four masters uh, Godfrey Keating mm. all of these people preserved so much indeed that would be lost um, and I think that's an aspect that um, sometimes it's forgotten in Ireland. We didn't have, like other countries in Europe, a national institution mm. uh, that uh, placed a high value on Irish tradition during the 15th, 16th and 17th and 18th, early 18th century. By and large, the, the, the people that ruled this country from London wanted to destroy any evidence that it ever existed. So we're very fortunate that we have some um, that that did survive, but it wasn't. If it wasn't for the dedication mm. of uh, so many uh, individuals that gave their lives uh, to that uh, preservation, um, I often I often thought when I was on the continent of Europe and I, I went to some of the libraries across the con uh, the continent uh, that. There isn't a library in Europe that doesn't treasure among its most uh, most treasured possessions manuscripts and books from Ireland, okay. and that's that that's a wonderful thing to say about your own country um, that um, that it's so highly thought of. And of course, uh, there were many people across Europe that recognised this, and uh, uh, if you like. That's why I always feel very close to Europe. Very last question. Um, <clears throat> you have been um, everywhere, and you're you're going around Ireland after this gig tonight. You're going to America after this. What what's been your proudest like moment so far in your musical career? I'm sorry, I missed your your proudest moment. You know, your your the moment that you feel the most pride in. That you're like, ah, oh, that was good. You know, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> Uh, that's another hard one too. Yeah, yeah. It's um, the end. <laughs> but um, I, I have so many uh, I think um, uh, playing for President Obama three years yeah. ago was probably um, uh, one of the highlights of my career because um, I've always thought um, highly of um, America and the opportunity and uh, that it gave to so many people from this country. Uh, the up the you know one thing the people left. Ireland in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century to go to America, but they could express themselves over there. And in many ways, um, um, it gave strength and identity. And probably we wouldn't be around today if it wasn't for the generosity of uh, uh, Irish America. Because uh, I think it was Professor Lee in in, uh, in uh, New York said that uh, um, there was no Irish America, no New York Irish. Um, it would have been known 1916. Um, so I've always um, had a, an appreciation for for um, for America, and you know, playing for the, the president and being able to speak to him, and uh, um, playing for the all of the people to represent the public representatives there was a great honor for me, and for indeed for the uh, tradition that I sing and I said. That, the day I was in the in Washington, I said that it, it speaks volumes for America. They could ask somebody like myself that has sung protest songs, songs of resistance, indeed against uh, injustice, and uh, I've been proud indeed that I've 
come to Washington and you recognize that a voice like mine in any society can do any good and should always be there uh, because uh, we can say through songs but sometimes uh, cannot be said indeed through literature and verse. Come on, show your wife how you won't let us down the pond. Oh, the hour away, take your own life away from the green and lovely lights of 